Okay, now we're going to talk about materiality. And, and here we have this little cartoon here where they're saying, we conducted our audits in accordance, accordance with auditing standards generally accepted in the United States of America. Those standards require that we plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free of material misstatements. Well, what does this mean exactly? We're going to just go through that statement and analyze what these components of what exactly is material misstatement and what is obtain reasonable assurance. What, is, what does that mean also? Yeah, you'll find out, yes. That's the way to look at it. Um, material, what exactly is materiality? Is the application of accounting standards and accounting policies involves a high degree of judgment. Where decisions are required about the appropriateness of a particular accounting judgment, the concept of materiality suggests that this should only be an issue if the judgment is significant or material to a user of the accounts. So the question is, who are the user of the accounts? Um, and how, what degree is it going to affect the financial statements and what the, the company is, is uh, stated on their financial statements. Mater materiality is one of the basic and major concepts of auditing. This is this sort of like professional judgment. This sort of go hand in hand. If the materiality concept remain, remains an ambiguous concept because it's subject to professional judgment. A myriad of research has shown that auditors do not reach a consensus as to the meaning of material. Because it's basically, this is your intuition, your judgment as an auditor and the, and the uh, client relationship that makes you come up with the idea of what's you know, the level of materiality. So it's subject to revision. It can be revised um, based on the change in circumstances of the client, the economy, the industry. So we see like the toy company, it may not have been that, you know, the, whatever we saw there may not have even been occurring like five years ago. So, you know, the audit is always changing. The current firm is always changing. They're dynamic. So once you make a decision five years ago, it doesn't mean that you can hold on to the same decision or the same uh, judge, uh, judgment of materiality level five years later. So it's an assessment made by an auditor of the amount of the tolerable misstatement. There's always going to be some level of misstatement in the financial statements. So the question is uh, what level is acceptable? of a client's of financial statements in relationship to the amount of assessed risk assumed. So that's based on, your, you know, the risk level that you've, based on looking at the tone at the top, the accounting practices, and the internal controls, all these issues, you're going to decide the amount of assessed risk assumed in the client and the perceived users of the report. So that usually is your stakeholders, your creditors, um, there could be another company perhaps that wants to buy them out. You know, there's like a number of myriad of stakeholders and interested users of the information. And it's considered throughout all three stages of an audit and considered in the planning, the field work, and the final analytical procedures, which I think you guys reviewed last week. If you had class last week, I'm not sure, but with the weather. <laughs> a materiality assessment determines the extent of audit procedures performed by the CPA. This is part of your audit plan. And the financial statements that have been determined to be material and misstated by a CPA must either be adjusted or the CPA must issue a qualified or adverse opinion, which I mean, most firms want to avoid that. So usually th this is where it stops before they have to issue a qualified or adverse opinion. <coughs> when is it material? Good question. <laughs> Information is material if its omission or misstatement could influence the economic decision. So it's got to be significant. So a uh, uh, $3,000 misstatement for Walmart's not significant. Of users taken on the basis of financial statements. Materiality depends on the size of the item or error judged in the particular circumstances of its omission or misstatement. Thus, materiality provides a threshold or cutoff point rather than being a primary qualitative characteristic which information must have if it is to be useful. So, you know, this is it basically has to affect the economic decisions of users of, of the information. Now, this is on the public or the external auditing side. Um, internal auditors may have a whole different metric that they operate. You know, for example, I'm working on a project now where the internal auditors decided that a cup of coffee in terms of fraud is material. So that's a different aspect of materiality. But in terms of external auditors, they're not going to look for the fraud. You know, they may report small frauds to the audit committee and say, you may want to look at this area of the company in terms of their internal controls, but that's not significant or relevant for most financial statements with a cup of coffee is 95 cents. So, so there's, you know, there's always an issue of cost versus materiality level. What level can you assure the financial statements and make them and 
and to verify the economic decisions for the the user of the financial statements and also keep the cost down at a reasonable level.